Welcome back to question two of this series where we find the equilibrium concentrations from initial concentrations and the equilibrium constant. We ended off with the following question which reads the reaction below is carried out at a different temperature at which Kc, our equilibrium constant, is 0 0.055 and the reaction is the exact same one we worked with in question number one. This time however the reaction mixture starts with only the product and the concentration of NO is given as 0 0.0100 molar and no reactants. Find the equilibrium concentration of N2, O2 and NO at equilibrium. Let's begin by creating an ice table and an ice table consists of three rows, one for the initial concentration, then the change and the equilibrium. So I'll rewrite it as N2 plus O2 and this yields two molecules of NO. I'll write in I, C, and E. We've been given the initial concentration of NO, so I'll write in here 0 0.0100. And since the question tells us that only the product exists at the beginning, we can have 0 as the initial concentration for these two molecules. We are looking for the equilibrium concentration here, here, and here. The next thing that I want to do is find which direction this reaction will be occurring in. And we can do that by finding the reaction quotient. QC is equal to the initial concentration of the products over the concentration of the reactants. So 0 0.0100, and that's being raised to the power of 2 because of this coefficient, over, and we have 0 times 0 in the denominator. Now when you have a product of 0 in the denominator, we can't generate a QC. And in that case, according to this table, the reaction shifts to the left. We're looking at this one. So we know that the reaction, the overall reaction, is going to be moving in this direction. The next step is to create the equilibrium expression. So Kc is equal to the concentration of NO raised to the power of 2 over the concentration of the products N2 times O2. And according to the question, Kc is 0 0.055. So I'm going to replace Kc with 0 0.055. Now what's interesting now is that we have absolutely no information about the equilibrium concentrations for any of these molecules. So we have to come up with an algebraic expression that represents what it is for each. I'll start by setting the change of concentration for N2 as X. And by all means, you could have done the same thing for O2 or for NO. And using this X value, I can create stoichiometric ratios using the coefficients of these molecules. So there's a one-to-one -one ratio here. This means that this can also be represented as X. And there's a one-to-two ratio here. So we will write down 2x, but since we're comparing reactants to products, it should be negative, 2x. Now, to find E, we add up I and C. So 0 plus x is x, again, x. And over here, we have 0 decimal 0, 1, 0, 0, plus negative 2x. That's the same thing as saying negative 2x plus 0 decimal 0, 1, 0, 0. I'm going to substitute these algebraic expressions right into where they belong. And then we can start to solve. Let's go ahead and do that now. Beginning with NO, we have the expression negative 2x plus 0 decimal 0, 1, 0, 0. And that is all being raised to the power of 2 over x times x, which is x squared. The next step in the solving process is to multiply both sides of this equation by x squared, and that will cancel out the x squared at the bottom. And by all means, just like how I did in question one of this series, you could solve this in a different way. You can actually square root both sides of this equation and take that route. I just want to try something different this time. So that cancels out. We're left with 0 decimal 0, 5, 5, x squared is equal to what's on the right side. And I will actually expand this expression where I have negative 2x plus 0 decimal 0, 1, 0, 0. And I'll rewrite it because I will be expanding. 
So negative 2x times negative 2x gives us positive 4x squared. You want to be very careful with your calculation here. Negative 2 times 0 0.0100. Watch, negative 2 times 0 0.0100 gives us negative 0 0.02. And also don't forget the x. Then we have the same calculation here. These can be combined, and I'll do that shortly. This number times that number, 0 0.0100 times itself, gives us plus 0 0.0001. All of this will go on the right side of our equation. Now we'll combine like terms, and as you can see we have terms in our equation that are of second degree. This means that we'll be using the quadratic formula shortly. I'll bring this over, making it negative 0.055. That being said, 4 minus negative 0.55 is equal to 3.945. So 0 is equal to 3.945 x squared Combining these, I end up with negative 0.04x plus 0.0001. This is a quadratic equation in general form. We'll represent this as a. We'll represent the coefficient here as b. And this number, the constant, as c. And if you can't recall what the quadratic formula looks like, it's now on the screen. So we have x is equal to, and remember with the quadratic formula there's always the potential of getting two answers. And you have to distinguish which of the x's is the correct one. We'll discuss that when we get to it. Negative, negative 0 0.04, that's our b, plus minus the square root of, once again, negative 0 0.04, raise that to the power of 2, minus 4 times this number, and that's being multiplied to c. At the bottom, we have 2 times a, so 2 times 3.945. Now if you do the calculation correctly, you should get two x values. Now we have to determine which of these is the right one. I'm going to go back to these three expressions. These two expressions, if I substitute any of those x's that I just found, will be positive. So it doesn't really give us a good idea of which one is right. But this one, I'm more concerned about. I'm going to rewrite it underneath and evaluate x at these two numbers that we found. Whichever output is positive, that's the correct x value that we'll use. We have negative 2 times 0 0.00566 plus 0 0.0100, and we end up with a negative output. So right away, we know that this can't be correct. What about this one? Negative 2 times... 0 0.00475 plus 0 0.0100 and this time the output is positive. So you can tell that this number is more likely to be correct than the other one and we'll be using that as our x is here. So this comes out to be 5 times 10 to the power of negative 4 molar and these two come out to be 0 0.00475. I believe that answers the question when they ask us to find the equilibrium concentrations of the three molecules in this reaction. And don't forget that these are also molar. And there you have it. That is how to find the equilibrium concentrations from initial concentrations and the equilibrium constant.